morning. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and once again we are gathering by way of the internet and as we practice our own distancing from each other for each other's safety and for the, to follow the rules that we've been asked to follow. And we welcome you and we pray that as we gather this morning that we will feel the presence of God and that we will know that we are, even though we are spaced apart, that we are together in love and grace. Please join me as we read together our call to worship. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For he will hide me in the shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me upon a rock. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you do indeed shelter us in all of our days, especially in days of trial and difficulty. You are to us a God of peace, mercy, and hope. This morning as we worship you, we pray that we may be uplifted by your Spirit that we may feel again the joy that is new every morning, and that we may find new resources for living our lives in the fullness that you have called us to live and the fullness that is made possible for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us join together now as we sing hymn number 187, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. know that God hears our prayers and cares deeply for us, that he fills us with grace and love. Remembering that, let us now 
pray together our prayer of confession that is printed in your bulletin. Holy God, we confess that we have strayed from your paths of right relationships and peace and have dishonored you, ourselves, and your creation. We repent from these hurtful ways. Forgive us, we pray, as we learn to forgive others and guide our feet in the ways of grace, love, and peace. Amen. Let us now pause for a silent prayer as we each in our own hearts confess before God. Amen. God's mercy overflows as a healing stream to cleanse us of our offenses. Therefore, know that we are forgiven and receive new life in Christ. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Today, our scripture lesson comes from the 23rd Psalm. And unbeknownst to you parents, the children and I had been working on a wonderful presentation of the 23rd Psalm. So they know most of it. And as you're out um, and you're reading your Bible, if you would read that 23rd Psalm with them a couple times a week, it would be awesome because when we do get back together, we want to present you with that uh, rendition of the 23rd Psalm. So let me just turn there. And in the 23rd Psalm, it talks about the Lord being our shepherd. So I have a baby lamb, a little sheep, just for you guys, because I know y'all love it. And believe it or not, Miss Debbie tried her best to get a live sheep, but I could only find goats in our area. So we have a little sheep. And, you know, in the 23rd Psalm, it talks about how the Lord is our shepherd and how he takes care of us and leads us to food and water and his sheep just follow him and that he has his rod or his staff that he guides them with and if they get in danger he can grab them and hook them and pull them in and save them if he needs to rescue them and then boys and girls over in the book of John chapter 10 it talks again about Jesus being the shepherd. And Jesus is actually answering the Pharisees. Um, they had kind of given him a question, and he begins to tell them that he's the good shepherd. He said, and anybody who comes into the sheep pen by any other gate is not their true shepherd. He said, my sheep know my voice, and they only follow me. And when I open the gate, they come out. And when I close the gate, they stay out. And when I open it, they can come in. But they follow my voice. And so in bringing that story into our time and how it might touch us, I thought about a story of my granddaughter, Ruby. Um, when she was born, her parents lived in Jacksonville, Florida. And I went there when she was born and spent some time with them. And she came home from the hospital, brand new baby. And her dad told me after the second night, he said, Miss Debbie, I'm really afraid that if the baby cries during the night, I'm not going to hear her. I won't hear Ruby and I'm afraid I'm going to sleep through it and she's going to need me. And it was one of those moments where God just gives you an answer. And, and I said, you know, Brett, that's Ruby's dad. I said, you don't have to worry about that. I said, because what's going to happen is you're going to grow what I call daddy ears. All of a sudden, you're going to be tuned into that baby, and you will hear her even if she rolls over. So you don't have them quite yet because you just got your baby. But you're going to grow those daddy ears, and you will hear her when she's moving around or when she's crying or when she needs you at night. So don't be afraid. And so when I hear about knowing the voice of the Lord, I think, how do we know his voice? He says we know it, but the only way we come to know it is if we listen, if we grow our Jesus ears, if we'll spend time in his word, spend time in his presence talking to him and listening, our Jesus ears will begin to grow and we will recognize his voice. And that's whether you're a little lamb or... If you're a big lamb, 
So even the adults can spend time and listen, and then you will know the voice of the Good Shepherd, and he will keep you from danger, and he will guide you all through your life. Let's say a prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for every set of ears that's listening, for every set of ears that will grow to recognize the voice of the Lord and be led by him. Father, I thank you for the time to share with the children, and I ask that we continue to seek you, even though we're apart, knowing that by your Spirit we are all still one. Amen. Bye. Our first scripture lesson this morning is one that is very familiar to us and very dear to our hearts. Please join as we read together this psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord all my life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now sing hymn 801, The Lord's My Shepherd, I Shall Not Want, verses 1 and verses 4 through 5. Our second scripture reading this morning is from John's Gospel, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Listen again for the word of God. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will endure forever. In recent days, I have noticed uh, frequently people outside, perhaps more than they typically are, and I'm especially delighted to see children out playing and getting fresh air, and it kind of reminds me of what things were like when I was a kid. Maybe it's one of those really small but rather significant joys that I find in the midst of this pandemic state that we're in right now as I try uh, to look for silver linings in all of the dark clouds. I'm reminded of how much time we spent in our neighborhood riding bikes and playing ball and doing things out in the wooded area between my house and the local school and park. We were outside a lot of the time, but most every night around 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock in that time frame, you would start to hear parents of, of all of my friends and playmates, and especially their mothers, calling all of us to come home for supper. What I think was rather remarkable about all of that, looking back on it, is how attuned most of us were to the sound of our own parents' voices calling us. I wouldn't always hear my friends' parents calling them to come home, but they would, and I would certainly hear my own parents calling me to come to my house for dinner. The sheep know the voice of their shepherd. Jesus was quite aware of just how true this is, but he also knew that there are thieves and bandits to be faced along the way. Thieves and bandits who try to steal the sheep, who try to call them out from the fold where they are safe and seek to do them harm. In his own personal context, the gospel writer probably had in mind that the thieves and bandits would have been Jewish leaders, perhaps, who acted in duplicity with Roman authorities, or perhaps also false messiahs who claimed God's blessing to rest upon them, but whose real mission was to fleece God's flock out of whatever they could. John may even have had in mind some of the early leaders in the Christian communities who were preaching a false gospel and pilfering church funds along the lines of those bad shepherds who are referred to by the prophet Ezekiel, bad shepherds who seek to feed themselves rather than to feed the sheep whose care uh, is theirs. I can't imagine that we put different faces on the people and the things that we understand to be thieves and bandits in our own spiritual lives. Perhaps it is some sort of destructive habit that we have or some addiction that leads us off of the righteous path. Maybe it is the pressure of expectations that other people have of us that keep us from being available, as available to God as we might be otherwise. Maybe it's even a, a bad set of beliefs or behaviors that make it hard for us to discern what God is calling us to do with our lives. Maybe right now it's even dealing with the limitations of the present time that drive us into places spiritually and emotionally where the voice of our shepherd calling us is very hard for us to hear. I think it's true to say that this passage concerns the leadership of Jesus Christ, though I'm sure that all kinds of books have probably been written on that topic by now. It's something that in the church we don't talk a lot about, Jesus' leadership abilities. With, uh, we talk about him in a lot of different ways and from a lot of different angles, but not often in this way, at least uh, in my experience. It should be noted that when Jesus claims in verse 11 to be the good shepherd, the word, the Greek word there that is translated as good really means something closer to ideal or model than it does to good the way we normally understand it, which is kind of as the opposite of bad. It doesn't really mean that. It means ideal or, or model. So Jesus says to us that he is the model shepherd, the shepherd who does what is ideal in the sight of God, the one who can be trusted to lead the people in the ways of God, no matter the circumstance of life that they're facing. That seems to be an important thing for all of us to consider at this present time, because we need to know who we should follow in these days of uncertainty when the voices of thieves and bandits threaten to lead God's people into destruction. 
It is a voice that we can trust no matter what befalls us in life because it belongs to the one who loved us, not just with words, but who loved us with a sacrificial love. His leadership was made complete as his love of God's people was poured out for our salvation on the cross of suffering. We follow the shepherd whose leadership is ideal and who models God's love by giving his life for the sheep. I'm not sure many of us have often seen that sort of leadership in life. We will observe the sacrament of the Lord's Supper momentarily, and the elements that we partake are firm evidence of the leadership that cost Christ his earthly life and afflicted him with a level of suffering we can scarcely imagine. We all know that he gave his disciples and that he gave the church for all times and places a commandment. The commandment that we continue to remember him as we eat the bread and drink the cup. But there is certainly a sense that it is Christ's voice that calls us to the table. He tells us to eat and drink and remember. And that by doing so, we might be led back to him again and again. It's probably not that much different than the ways that our parents called us home for supper when we were little, so that we could find food and fellowship and nurture that we all needed and that we, quite frankly, continue to need. There is a way in which the communion table calls us to much the same kind of thing. Jesus said that he came to give us abundant life, unlike the thief who comes only to kill and to destroy. Jesus doesn't lead us toward God only to leave us in some impoverished state, some state in which we find ourselves alien from God, but instead he gives us the richness and the abundance of God's blessings which abound for the church. In this time of scarcity, when we seem to lack so many things, and we find ourselves wandering in the wilderness and looking for a place to find refuge from the storm, there is a voice that always calls us. There is a table that is spread and a promised abundance that awaits us. Our lives as Christians are lived in the care of a shepherd who knows our name and leads us beside still waters. He is the one who lays down his life for us, and as God's model shepherd, He calls us to live sacrificially for one another. So it matters not that we're compelled to walk for a while in the darkest valley because we fear no evil with Christ by our side and his rod and his staff giving us the guidance that we need. Today he calls us to the table to break the bread and drink the cup. Today he calls us to remember and to live out of the abundance that he provides. Today, he calls us by name, and we hear his voice because the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. Those who have ears to hear, let them listen. Amen. Jesus invites us to this table to partake of the meal that has been prepared for us. He tells us, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If those who hear my voice will open the door, I will come in to them and eat with them, and they will eat with me. Let us taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all those who find refuge in God. Let us now profess the things that we believe, saying together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the the communion communion of saints, the the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection resurrection of the body, and the life life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. 
Holy and gracious God, you are our salvation and our hope. We thank you that, that you have made us a resurrection people through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that today as we worship, that you're with us wherever we are and that you hear our prayers that we offer to you. We do pray for each other this morning, God. We miss our gathering together in this building that we call church. And yet we remember gratefully that we are church apart from this place. We are church in our unity with you and in the love and grace with which you, we are bound, are bound together. We are church as we share this sacred sacrament of bread and cup. We pray that this morning we may feel the blessing of church even in our distance from each other. We pray, O oh Lord, this morning for all of those who feel lonely and isolated. We pray for those who are anxious and fearful. We pray for those who are on the front lines of the struggle against COVID-19, for doctors and nurses, first responders, for scientists and technicians, for all of those who are volunteers and are giving themselves so tirelessly to help all of us and keep us safe. We pray, God, for those who are tasked with making decisions that affect us all. May they be guided by care for the good of all, and for the safety and well-being of even the least among us. We thank you now, God, for these gifts of bread and cup that we share today. Help us to remember that you are ever with us, never forsaking us. Strengthen our faith and bolster our hope. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That evening as Jesus gathered with his disciples, at the conclusion of the supper he took bread and he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, our Savior took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood and shed for the forgiveness of sin. Take it, drink it, and do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes.
Let us join together now in prayer. Lord God, we are so grateful for this time that we have shared together, grateful for the sharing of the sacrament, and prayerful about the things and the ways that you feed us as we partake of these elements. Lord, as we partake of the body of Christ, send us out to be the body of Christ in this world. For it is in Jesus' holy and risen name that we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.